Hello guys, uh, this is actually my first video on YouTube. Uh, my name is Alexey Chaika, and uh, in this video I'm going to show you how you can set up an SSL in a Spring Boot web application. I believe you have already noticed that almost all instructions in the internet say that you have to have a key storage file, you have to put a key pair there, you have to use a key tool for doing that, and actually this is true, but nowadays in the Spring Boot applications you can do it much easier, and you don't have to do this stuff with key tool at all. Um, I'm gonna show you how you can set up an SSL in a Spring Boot web applications, but first just a few words about what SSL is and why we may need it, okay? Just a few words. Let's imagine you are sitting in a restaurant and you want to visit a web service. For example, you want to check your bank account. So, you can use a mobile network for doing that, or you can connect to a Wi-Fi network in a restaurant, to Wi-Fi router, and everything works, you are happy, but Actually, your requests to the web service and responses could be captured. For example, in this picture, a thief could make TCP dumps on a router, and a thief could now be aware about your bank account details, even about your login and password. A thief simply can read all messages between you and a web service if he has access to the Wi-Fi router. So, uh, what do we have to do? <laughs> Actually, yes, we have to set up an SSL. In order to do it, we have to place an SSL certificate and a private key into the server. Combination of these files is also called a key pair. You may ask, if we have a private key, why don't we have a public key? Actually, we do have. A certificate contains a public key as well as another data like ownership and expiration. Just a private key is a separate file. But because web service has to share a certificate containing a public key with user. Right? But private key has to be never shared. It's important. Never share your private key. So, now a client can receive a certificate containing a public key. And the client can establish a secure session with web servers using HTTPS protocol. What does it mean? First of all, a thief can no longer understand what messages are about. Requests and responses are encrypted, and only client and web servers can understand what these messages are about. Second, a client now can also verify ownership, check expiration date, and so on. So now, requests and responses could be decrypted on the on client and server side, and the client can safely work even in the restaurant Wi-Fi network. So, in order to start setting SSL up, we need a key pair. A key pair contains a certificate itself and a private key. A private key is, <laughs> I'm sorry, is private. Certificate is public and it contains a public key, identity information, expiration time, and so on and so forth. And there are two ways to get these files. First one is to request a certificate authority. This is a preferable way for production, simply because we trust them more, browsers trust them more, and ownership could be verified by a third party site. The second option is to generate these files manually. Such certificates are also called self-signed certificates. They are still fine. HTTPS will work, but ownership could not be verified, and even most of the browsers complain on such certificates. Self-signed certificates could be good for dev environments, I don't know, or in case of some kind of private on-premise clusters, you know, yeah. So, even now, watching this video on YouTube, you use HTTPS protocol under the hood. Of course, YouTube has set up an SSL. Let's have a look on its certificate. Um, we should press this button, for example, in Firefox browser, and we can see that connection is secure. That basically means that we use SSL and HTTPS protocol. And uh, we can find here information about certificate that we received. And let's do this. Well, now, we, <laughs> we can actually see that there is not a single certificate is used here. There is a chain of certificate. The first certificate, the second one, the third one, and the last one. And the last one is also called a root certificate. Actually, certificate chain is a popular solution nowadays. Thank you guys for watching me explaining why we do need an SSL. <laughs> and sorry, I spent too much time. I just thought that it is really important and I have to remind you about that. Now let's switch to implementation. 
As I promised, no key tool will be used, so let's go. You can see here, I have created an initial project. Uh, let's have a look at its uh, dependencies. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is nothing special here. Uh, we can see, for example, a Spring Boot Starter web because we have a Spring Boot web application, right? And uh, we haven't set up an SSL. We have no certificate and private key here. And such application works on HTTP protocol, right? So let's uh, launch it and uh, check. Now we can see here that Tomcat started on port 8080 HTTP. Let's check it in browser. Mm -hmm. So HTTP protocol is used and now we have to set up an SSL. But before doing that, uh, let's have a look at Spring Boot 2.7 release notes. Uh, we can see here one very important release note. Uh, web server SSL configuration using PEM encoded certificates. Let me zoom in. Yeah, I think it should be much better right now. Uh, embedded web servers can be configured to use SSL with PEM encoded certificate and a private key files using the properties. So now you just have to place uh, certificate itself and private key uh, into your application, specify required properties and basically this is enough. SSL is gonna work and you could use HTTPS protocol and ownership could be verified if you use a certificate from certificate authority and so on. And we also have can see a note here. This is provided as an alternative to configuring SSL with Java key store files, right? So no key store files right now until you really need to use them. And uh, no key tool could be used. So uh, let's try to do this in this way. In this video, we will use a self-signed certificate. Right. Uh, you can generate it using some command line tool, uh, for example, key tool, but we agreed not to use uh, key tool in this video at all. So let's generate it online. For example, uh, here, uh, let's enter our site localhost and generate SSL. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can see here a key pair, a certificate itself and a private key. Right, and uh, now all that we have to do is to download these files into our resources folder of our Spring Boot application. So I have downloaded these files into the resources uh, folder. I have also created a key pair folder inside of that. And uh, what can we see here? Uh, certificate itself, right, and uh, private key. I want to pay your attention that in some cases uh, if you uh, request a certificate from certificate authority actually in most of the cases you will receive a chain of uh, certificates certificates chain and this is fine it, it is actually even better uh, but what should you do in this case uh, you could you can receive them as a single file but if you if you didn't receive them in a single file you could combine them just like that for example uh, the first certificate begin certificate and certificate the next one the third one, the fourth one, and so on. Just place them one by one into the single file. And that's, and that's it. N and now we have to specify the key pair in our application properties file. And, uh, <laughs> but before doing that, I believe I have to remove what I have just added. <laughs> I don't need this anymore. Yeah, application properties file. The first thing that you have to specify is a server it's a server port. Uh, by default, all the browsers and other clients assume that they should use a port 443 for HTTPS connections. And uh, so if you don't want to specify a port in your URL explicitly, you could just specify the port number 443 in your application properties files. Uh, but if you want, you can use some another port. That's not a problem at all. So now let's uh, specify <coughs> our key pair uh, without key storage file. It, we could do this using SSL property and certificate. Uh, we have put uh, our certificates into, resources, into the resources folder, so we could use uh, class path. And uh, we have a key pair folder 
here and a local host that uh, CRT uh, certificate file. Now let's do the same for a certificate private key. Let's specify this file location private key key. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and let's try to launch our application. So let's do this. <coughs> And now we can see that Tomcat started on port 443 HTTPS, right? So everything is, seems to be fine, but let's try to open uh, it in browser. So uh, HTTPS, actuator, health, let's try to do this. Aha, you can see, now you can see that the browser complains <sighs> it simply doesn't like our certificate. Why? And this is because we use self-signed certificate. This is why you should not do this in production. Use certificates issued by certificate authorities. Anyway, let's accept the, the, the risk. Why not? We know that everything is fine. Yeah, and uh, we can see that HTTPS works actually. Uh, we can try to take a look at certificate. And we can see our certificate. Uh, we can see that it, it was been, it has been issued for uh, local host and it's not a chain of certificate it's our self signed certificate and yeah everything is actually fine it works uh, congratulations we have set up an SSL in our Spring Boot application without using a key tool at all so. Thank you for your attention. Uh, we have set up an SSL in a Spring Boot application without using a key store file. Uh, actually, I believe in some cases using a key store file still could be useful. Uh, for example, if you want to store uh, several key pairs in a single key store file or something else. And uh, I hope this video was useful and helped somebody. If you have any suggestion, give me no. And if you're interested in something else, that you think I can explain uh, pretty well, you can also share with me in comments. So uh, have a wonderful rest of the day and uh, bye bye.